You're looking at a world after surviving 100 days in hardcore Minecraft. Except this world started as nothing but a single chest. So how did I make all of this from just this? Well, you'll have to stick around and find out. Don't forget to subscribe if you enjoy and give you 3k likes and maybe I'll do another 100 days. So we started on day one with a chest. I don't really know what I expected. Except this is no ordinary chest. This chest is called an infinite chest. An infinite chest is a chest that you take all the items off, and after a couple of seconds, it will respawn with a new chest. Complete wow. with new items. This chest can range from anything from a village chest, to desert temple chest, to even going all the way to an end city chest. So the possibilities for me to get stuff here are insanely good. And so I spent the start of this day breaking the chest, hoping to get some saplings. I'm going to need a lot of wood to survive a hundred days and, well, I mean, you know, saplings equals infinite tree. I, I don't feel like I need to explain that one. And whilst I was breaking the chest, I learned of a little gimmick that this map has. Basically, there are events. These events can help me by making the chest better or shorten the length it takes for a chest to respawn. All these chests can make my life a living hell by, well, spawning the undead. From what I can tell, these events are completely random when they happen and it doesn't say whether it can be a good or bad start. And so I really really need to get a lot of good gear as quick as possible. By the time the night was come, I had obtained four spruce saplings and enough string for a bed, and so I was able to sleep away the first night. I started extending the platform on day two. I was using any kind of wood I've got, so just, you know, ignore the gross mismatch of the floor. And then it was a fight for survival. Not only did an end invasion happen, causing a wither skeleton, shulker, and endermite to attack me, shortly afterwards, a never attack happened, meaning a blaze, a wither skeleton, Skeleton, the, the whole thing was just trying to stop me from getting far in this world. It was also this day that a good ah. trader spawned. Now, this happens occasionally where a good trader will spawn, and if you have enough emeralds, it gives you some really good trades. Whether that be get yourself some diamonds or some neverite scraps, the possibilities here were quite good. I was able to get some emeralds, and I was about to do my first couple of trades, and the trader left before I could. Because, of course it would. There was another event on this day where the dripstone started to rain from the sky, meaning it had to make a tiny little bit of a shelter. And then the bad luck to finish off the day made the chest spawning even worse. I started day three by bone mealing the spruce tree, and I forgot that when you make a giant spruce tree, it makes all that podzel in the floor, and so I nearly accidentally lost all of my grass. This single one piece of grass could be the difference between me being able to spawn animals and not. I, I will protect this piece with my life life and then i just got bombarded by invasion started with the end invasion then the phantoms attacked which uh i mean we all know how much we love phantoms and after that it was the never attack I, I got destroyed these first couple of days this is stupid and then i made a realization about something that i could do and this one word in my script pretty much sums it up perfectly slaps yeah, I just started making some slabs to extend the island even more. The good trader returned back on day four, and I actually decided to go against trading. Now, I could have technically bought, like, a mushroom and stuff, but at this point, I wasn't really struggling for food, so I decided to hold off and save my emeralds for later. I'd also like to point out that during the time that I was breaking the chest, I got a little bit of armor. The main thing was some golden boots. And so when an event happened that caused the piglings to spawn, well, um, well, they weren't going to touch me. Well, not at the moment, at least. I also used the events in my favor, so during the time that the Never attacks have been happening, pigmen have been spawning, and so when a pillager attacks and they shoot me and I kinda put a pigmen in the middle of it, you get to watch the pigmen kill the pillagers and I don't even have to do anything. I was loving life on this island. And then the pillagers attacked again, and again. Really, three times in one day? And I also got my first 10 dirt blocks, which I didn't even realize could happen in a chest, but I wasn't really gonna complain by the extra dirt. Also, villagers ah. started spawning. Trust me, they'll, uh, they'll come in droves, you'll see. On day five, the villagers were actually gonna be quite useful here, because not only do the villagers spawn, but iron golems spawn as well. And so when phantoms attacked, I could just sit next to my iron golem brothers and just let them kill the phantoms. I also broke a chest and got a looting two diamond sword, which is going to be so useful in the long run. Even got myself a nice little bit of dirt. And then, well, the villagers... Where they were kind of in the way all the time, every time. And so I made a nice little area for them to be trapped in for an eternity. Now, I know people may complain about the living conditions of the villagers, but trust me, it's either that or they're just everywhere. And I'd rather have it like that. It was on day seven where 
I got enough obsidian from the chest to go to the nether. I was interested in whether it'd be a normal nether or whether or not it'd be something special, but it's just a normal nether. But it gave me a chance to make some plants. Now, I want a lot of dirt, you know, for farming, for tree growing, just to make a nice dirt platform. And at this point in time, I was rocking probably about 50 dirt in this entire world, and even that might be an exaggeration. However, the most astute Minecraft members will know that if you get some gravel, combine it with some dirt to make some coarse dirt, and then hell it, you get normal dirt. And the best part is that that turns two dirt into four dirt. And so going into the nether, I was looking for some gravel. And on day eight, I will I broke my third shovel, drinking up all of the gravel. It was time for me to head back and start the process of getting an infinite supply of dirt. <laughs> also, it's kind of funny that I just don't have to deal with mobs at the moment. I love me some iron golems. This is great. On day nine, I started making a dirt platform. On day 10, after using all of the gravel, I made a pretty big dirt platform, but incredibly, I accidentally made it too big. But at least on day 11, I was able to start some farms up. I'm sort of speed running these couple of days because honestly, not a lot happened. I headed back into the nether on day 12. I wanted to find a bastion because there was a certain little music disc I was interested in. After searching around on day 13, I found myself a Bastion. Now listen, I've dealt with Bastions plenty of times, so I wasn't really concerned about dying. I mean, it, come on, it's Bastions. How many times have I dealt with this before? <laughs> I've never died in a Bastion. Okay, no, put it out, put it out. So, um, let's first talk about how a Brute did some damage and I somehow was able to escape without dying. It's a good start. And then I have what's called the Piglin Shield issue, which, um, well, I'll just show you the footage and let you just decide how in the world I made it out of this one. So yeah, I didn't get pick step. At least I was able to return home on day 14 and take a quick nap. The next job on day 15 was for me to make a cobblestone generator. This has got to be the ugliest cobblestone generator you have ever seen. Also, when the pillagers attacked, it freaked out the villagers, which I thought was kind of funny. I needed more dirt on day 16, so I went to get some more gravel. And after digging around on day 17 to get some gravel, I did have a little scare in the lava. But, you know, it was only a one-off scare. I mean, that wasn't gonna... Oh! Day 18, I expanded the dirt island some more with the dirt and the gravel and... I mean, we all know how this process works at this point. And by day 19, once I had that all completed, I somehow, somehow still did not have enough dirt to finish the island. I did start hoeing it down though, and I was just like, you know what? I'm just gonna be lazy. Well, first of all, on day 20, let's talk about how an invisible phantom attack happened. So, a weird thing about this map is that for whatever reason, when the mobs spawn in, they'll somewhat spawning in locations they're not supposed to, I think. And that's why some of the mobs will just be kind of invisible at times. I found the only way to fix it was to re-log and then hope for the best, and that worked most of the time. Once I finished that issue, I finished hoeing the dirt, and there was still a tiny little bit of hole. Now, I could have easily just got enough dirt to fill that hole, or I can be super, super lazy and just make it into a nice little lake. I I'll blame it on aesthetic reasons, you know, gotta make the gotta make the dirt island look pretty, but, um, yeah, I just couldn't be asked to get, like, 20 more dirt. <laughs> I even made a nice little sugarcane farm around it. I mean, I don't know if you can call it a sugarcane farm, but, you know, sugarcane's down. Look looks nice. Let me give you a bit of an insight to me and my script making, because on day 21, I have written down mine cobble, and then then on day 22, I've written the word same. <laughs> I go very in depth during my commentaries of these videos. However, on day 23, I did actually get a little bit to work. So I had an idea to make a nice little base. I really need to improve the building skills of my uh, my Minecraft skill set. I mean, I know I can survive the 100 days and I know I can fight people off for the most part. But when it comes to building in Minecraft, that's just not... It's just not something that I could do. And so I needed to get moving on this house. And I wanted to do it as soon as possible and take my time with it. Once I completed the platform on day 24, I started to work on cutting down some trees. There were some piglins in some trees as well. Before I'd uh, add that to the video. I realized I had a lot of alcacia trees on day 25. And so when I started cutting them down, I made the decision to make an orange alcacia house. I already know the people watching this video who already hate this idea, but bear, bear with me. I made a base frame on the same day. And I was still working on that on day 26. I, um, <laughs> I want to just quickly speed up and show you how long it took me to get these stairs correctly placed. Because, uh, 
Well, this was a little bit embarrassing if you ask me. Also, you know how I get all the villagers into that little shack? Well, it turns out more villagers spawned and now they were just getting in the bloody way. I mean, seriously, look, this is an infestation. Why is there so many villagers here? This is stupid. Once I managed to get them out of the way, I spent 27, 28, 29, and 30 basically cutting down acacia trees and building the house and ladies and gentlemen boys and girls those who prefer not to say let me introduce you this this house sucks this is a terrible terrible house oh my god it looks so bad i really i really tried this time i really tried i don't even use this house. I, like, I pretty much just put a single bed in this house and that's it this was i i don't know man i cannot build i don't know what it is this, this is embarrassing well at least with that out of the way i can start doing stuff that you know i'm pretty decent at and so i started making a platform for traders i did have to pause for a little bit because you know dripstone rain and it was on day 32 where i started collecting some wood and i made a bunch of fletching tables now i didn't realize when you pop down fletching tables those villages that were available to get to them charged over to them but you know and then just by making all the tricks i could i got as many stick trades as i could for the time being i went back to tree cutting on day 33 where uh, th this tree tried to fight me i swear to god i was cutting down the most overgrown alcacia tree you'll ever see and like the tree just didn't want to go down it was hiding blocks it was spawning in new trees every single time i was cutting them down this was ridiculous this was insane on day 34 with more dripstone rain i realized that the villagers that i was training with were slowly being killed by the dripstone and so i knew i had to quickly stop and make a roof for the village traders because if not within two or three dripstones they were all going to be dead anyway on day 35 another little bit of an insight so whilst i'm playing 100 days in minecraft i'm normally watching something in the background in this case i was watching a old minecraft let's play and so when a creeper started sizzling i kind of got spooked destroy my thing oh another one <laughs> god uh, at least they sound nice now and then when i wasn't paying attention i nearly died to an endermite imagine playing minecraft for 35 days and having to restart because of an endermite i finished the day by doing some more trades really just getting some emeralds there were some pigs spawning on day 36 which was an excellent start to the day i bought and made myself some full diamond armor i also tried to buy some neverite scraps but it turns out the good traders when they spawn will only let you buy two neverite scraps per trader. Which means if I want to get six pieces of neverite, which is one for all of my armor and one for my sword and pickaxe, that is going to require me to have 12 good traders and have the emeralds ready to trade with them. After figuring that all out, I made a nice little pig pen. I mean, to be honest with you, I'm really not going to need the animals because of how much bread I always get, but... um. You know, it's good to just have an animal pen there just in case. I still decided to make a carrot farm on day 37. If I am going to put some pigs in a pen, I may as well at some point try and breed them a lot. Also, so, as part of the never invasion, as I've mentioned, a blaze will spawn. And since half this world is made of wood, well, a fire is going to happen. I just didn't expect it to be the giant alcacia trees that have been my wood source the entire time. That was, a uh, well, that was kind of daughter to see over there. And on that note, it was time for me to return back into the nether, where first things first, there was just two more good traders in here, which so I was able to get four more scraps. Don't know what they were doing in there, but man, what can you do? And then I spent day 39 and day 40 searching around the nether to find myself a fortress. However, I was confident for the longest amount of time that this fortress did not have a blaze spawner. And though I was a very easily able to get some never ward, there was two never ward farms basically next to each other. The only way for me to actually get blazers was for me to kill the individual blazers they spawn around the fortress. This was a pain. This was absolutely a pain because I was running around like a madman. You want to know the funny thing? I did actually find a spawner when I already had nine blaze rods. I only needed one more for me to be happy. And so when I killed the final blaze, the only only place to spawn from the spawner i was done me finding the spawner was completely useless i returned back home on day 42 just casually breaking the chest and i got a green book which is something i've never seen before and because i can't focus on something for more than two seconds i may have accidentally just right clicked on the book and it just 
vanished. Absolutely just vanished. Don't know, don't know what happened. And I continued breaking the chest on day 42 and also for 43 as well when I realized that instead of trying to get leather from the main chest, why don't I just trade for it? Wouldn't it just be so much quicker? And so I began the process of getting some trades done. Also, this piglin took a fat L. That was hilarious. On day 44 and 45, I was doing the necessary trades, whether it was doing it with Fletcher's or doing it with the librarian that I'd now spawned in. And by day 46, well, first things first, I got another good trader to get me two more pieces of ancient debris. I completed our level 30 enchanter. And by day 47, after finding some lapis, I did my first enchant, my first level 30 enchant and oh, come on really at least some sheeps and cows spawned on the plains which um i don't really need leather or wool anymore but uh they at least some cows and sheep spawned i also got myself my first cat i was hoping one of many but uh yeah unfortunately that didn't work out after um well, you'll see. And also, there was a wither skeleton trapped in a tree. Um, yeah, not really much to say there. I then started grinding some cobble on day 48 because I had a plan. Well, two plans. Basically, I needed to make a platform for a future wither when I inevitably find that. And I also wanted to make a sort of contraption for storage, which um, I didn't realize how complicated this was going to be. Basically, the idea was that I wanted to put something underneath the chest that when it falls, it will fall into a hopper system that would just automatically put all of the items in in the chest below. I did actually get it like set up quite nicely and so I started breaking all of the chests around the main chest. The problem was with how cluttered everything was, I was kind of scared that everything was going to despawn. And so though I began breaking everything on 51, I had to try and fix the mess that I made on 52 by making sure stuff didn't despawn. And then I thought I had the problem fixed on day 43 and uh, <laughs> spoilers, I didn't. Though I managed to fix it on day 54 and the full contraption was working. And so now if I just break the chest a bunch, I can show exactly how this works. By day 56, don't ask me what happened on day 55, I had this contraption work. Basically, you would break the infinite chest, water would push it all the way to the hopper, and then the hopper would filter it down into these chests. Now, little did I know, because of how many wooden axes and wooden pickaxes and everything on there, this chest was so incredibly cluttered that I actually had to clean it out a little bit, because if not, I was running out of space, would you believe? And after finish cleaning it out on day 57, let's give another update to the island, because it's been a while since I've done one. Now with the house and the fully automated storage system, we had the villagers and the... What the llama doing? I actually took a mini break after day 57. And so when I joined the world back on day 58, the first thing that happened was a phantom attack. I'd like to give another thank you to these golems who, may I point out, when they spawn in, keep regeneration for like a very long time. These golems are just a godsend to this world. And then on day 59 and day 60, I went back to trading with the villagers. The idea was that I wanted to get myself enough emeralds for when the good traders will spawn in. And then that way, as soon as they spawn in, I can buy the two never right scraps and then move on and do something else. One spawned in on day 61, so I got two more Neverite scraps, and then I started to cut down the chest when another trader spawned in. There's two more Neverite scraps for your truly. And then on day 62, whilst I was cutting down the chest more, because I was hoping to get some gold from the chests, I got another chest book which just didn't work and I even looked into this one and I wasn't sure why. And then when I got another chess book, I decided let me not do anything with this book. Let me find out what in the world is going on with it. And so luckily the map download, which I'll put in the description for those who care, actually has a tutorial on how these books work. And so I thought if I right clicked on the chest, it would work. Or if I just put the book in the chest, it would work. You physically have to drop the book onto an open chest. I didn't know this. This doesn't make sense how this works, but I wasn't going to complain. And so I now had two chests and um, I finished off the day by dealing with a nice little fire. I don't even know where the blaze was. Where did this fire come from? My God. On day 63, I had to expand the storage area. A again, turns out with a double chest basically being broken and filling up everything up, it was uh, it was becoming very difficult to keep my storage managed, so I just expanded it as much as I could. And then on day 64, start of the day by, well, phantoms just suck, don't they? I made myself full neverite and also got two protection fours with the levels that I had. I think after 60 plus days, I'd have more levels, but uh, I guess I just haven't been doing level stuff. And since I knew that the next objective was for me to get some levels, it was time for me to go 
go and grind some wither skeletons. But before I did that, I had a quick look because I noticed that occasionally there was some enchanted books falling in the chest. And I'm so grateful that I did because not only did I find an efficiency 5 book for my pickaxe, I also found a sharpness 3 for my Neverite sword. This was going to help more than you could imagine. I then spent the next four days starting on day 66 all the way until day 70 getting myself free wither skulls. I mean, we all know how this process goes at this point. I'm not going to linger. Look at the amount of iron golems in the nether. Not only are they overtaking the overworld, they're, they're overtaking the nether. Why is there so many iron golems here? Remember that cobble that I got all that time ago to make the wither platform and the house and the underground storage and stuff? Yeah, I completely forgot I did that. So here we are on day 71, grinding some cobble. I did remember that I got that cobble though, and so I started searching the chest on day 72 to obtain it. I wanted to get some experience bottles as well, because I'm going to need a level 30 bow for me to actually be able to take on the wither without much of a hassle. I got the platform completed on day 73, and the preparation to fight the wither was my next job. I got a level 30 on my bow, where I got power 4 and unbreaking 3. Quickly searching around the chest, I got an enchanted golden apple and some arrows, and I knew that it was time on day 75 for me to fight the wither and can i just say this was by far the easiest wither fight i have ever done in minecraft this was ridiculous it barely did damage to me or the world around me now i did actually play this smart and bring some iron golems over to fight the wither but uh this, the, this is the fight sped up. This fight took no time at all. I, I don't understand why it was so quick, but uh, yeah, I, I killed a wither. And then on day 76, I don't really exactly remember what I was doing, but I noticed something in the sky. It turns out after 75 days, the end portal will spawn right above me. And so I quickly popped up there, noticed that I need every single eye to fill the portal, which at this point, because of how many chests I've broken, getting enough blaze rods and ender pearls to make eyes of enders was just not a problem at all. And then on day 77, I went into the end to fight the dragon. Yeah, and the dragon's dead. I mean, come on, I'm in full never right. I grabbed the egg, I returned home, I made this monument? I don't know if I can call this a monument or not. And the next job was for me to head back into the end to find myself an end city. And so on day 78, it was time for me to go into the far ends of the end. And why did I just jump back into the main portal? I searched around the end for the next six days, and it was day 84 where I found myself the end city. Though I do hate shulkers in most cases, them being able to hit me and levitate me up actually made my job quite easy here, and I had my elytra in no time at all. He even grabbed me the dragon head. Nice. I returned home by day 87, where I added to the monument by putting the dragon head on it. Again, it's, it's not really anything good, but, uh, you know, dragon head. Cool. And then by day 88, I realized that, uh, there wasn't really that much more I could do. I was kind of done with everything that, that I needed to do. I started by level 13 the rest of my diamond armor because I may as well get that all good. And then I was kind of just walking around thinking, what what can I do for the next 10 to 12 days in Minecraft? And then I realized that though I have a beacon, I kind of want a full beacon. And though I had a couple of diamond, iron, and even emerald blocks, I knew that the only way for me to be able to complete the full beacon is to do every trade under the sun. And here we are on day 98, completing the beacon. That, that was it. Waited two more days. Um, Here's the final shot of the island. Nice, lot of good stuff there. Full beacon. Um, Don't know what happened to the llama. Yeah, thanks for watching.